Hey guys, RC here. This is episode 11, the transfer special. And uh, of course, this will be broken up as we progress through. Uh, a couple of things. So fans player of the season, Aaron Collins with 34% of the vote. Thought it might be higher than that, but uh, Farron Rawson, center back, got 28%. And Nathan McGinley, our other center back, got 24%. Ibu Adams with the goal of the season, and Harvey White was the young player of the season. Uh, we do have a couple of uh, bits of news. Um, White, hold on. Uh, yeah, Pills from Leeds and Harvey White from Tottenham. We have extended their loans. Now, Pilge, I believe, is only nine months. Um, no, he's a year. White is only nine months. Well, they must have signed a new contract. Hold on. It was one of them. Nope. Okay. Oh, I know what it was. It was the guy that I was going to make an offer for. Atchins, uh, Hall. Hall. That's who it was. But he, evidently his, con his contract's up next year. And because they, somebody could buy him out at, in, in December or January, uh, I guess they couldn't loan him out longer than that. So the longest I could do was a nine-month. So I've decided to let Hall, Atchison, and Davis go back. I've extended Pilge and White, so our midfield should be solidified. Looks like I'm going to need a central mid, a defensive mid, and a right wing mid, uh, then a goalkeeper and somebody that could play striker and the number 10 uh, is so five players is what I'm going to be going after this year. I'm going to try to do a better job of not just signing guys that, you know, cross my paths on scouting because uh, that's what I tend to do. <laughs> but uh, anyway, all right. So you can see, boy, we dropped all the way down to 17th place and that was a dozen games into the season. But uh, we did a really good job rebounding and uh, got up into that automatic promotion late in the season. Uh, dynamics are looking good. We only have one team leader. We, uh, we're losing Matt Mills, uh, Lloyd James. Shepard will still be there. Freer, Rawson, and Winchester. Am I letting him go? I don't remember. Stokes leaving for sure. Aaron Collins will be back for sure. Uh, I extended Ibu Adams. I extended his contract. So we did a couple of contract extensions, not many. And uh, you can see our locker room, our leadership is really good. Uh, let's see, club vision. So the five-year plan, uh, work within payroll, sign players to sell for a profit. We've got to be able to sell players first and foremost. So uh, that's the problem I have. If you guys have any tips on how to sell players and actually get money at these lower leagues, let me know. Hopefully going up to League One gets us where some championship teams are starting to look at our players, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so they want to avoid a relegation battle, and then they immediately want to go to a top half finish and then playoffs. Wow. All right. Well, we'll accept that. So we want to avoid relegation. Uh, we're going to be passionate uh mid table nope there we go assertive very good and out all right uh all right they're on break uh mikulski i put mikulski up for sale didn't get any offers on him it's a little early but still uh we'll see how that goes and did anything no, none of, none of the guys are showing up. So uh, anyway, uh, taking a look here real quick, and you can pause this. Matt Mills is going to be gone. James, I've decided to let go. Stoke is going to go. Uh, I'm going to let Winchester go. Again, the $100,000. Dawson, the same thing. Plus, you know, they're not, they're not quite as good. Uh, Grubb. We're going to let him go. So that's going to really gut our midfield. But honestly, I think, you know, we're already three deep there. And 
you know, I tend to sign players and I end up going five or six deep. Let's take a look at our under 23s. Anybody in there? So I've got a 20-year-old center back. He's not bad. I don't think he's quite ready yet. Uh, Taylor Allen, a winger. I'm probably going to try to sell him. Uh, Romario Vieira. Again, he could probably do a job. Cameron Stam. Stam now, this is a guy. He's 19. I'm interested in him. He can dribble. He can finish. First touch. Pace, acceleration, agility, off the ball. His decision-making is really poor. I'd like to maybe ship him out for loan this year, uh, get him you know, a lot of first-team football, and maybe develop him. But uh, he's a guy that I'm interested in. But really, we don't have anybody – don't really have anybody else that's going to be looking to come into the first team this year. And if we look at the under 18, that's just pretty crap. Um, in fact, these are my youth candidates. I did not uh, sign Parsons. Yeah, he had the six pace, not interested. And we did sign a couple of the youngsters down here. So, We've got those guys. We're going to let these guys go. In fact, I'm going to, well, we'll let them continue to train. We'll let them continue to train for a little while. Um, all right. Well, we'll be back when there's any news. Just a little, few records going on. Aaron Collins with 24 goals, a new team record. Uh, nine assists by Lloyd James, a new club record. Uh, six player of the match awards for Collins, new club record. Uh, 16 shutouts by Smith, our keeper, new team record. So a lot of records falling. So thought you might be interested. And I think the next thing coming up is going to be the T-shirt, you know, the shirt sales, the kit sales. So we'll find out about that here in a little while. We're waiting for the playoffs to finish and everything else. Just in case you were interested, uh, Bradford City just beat Crawley 2-0. Away and won 2 1 on aggregate, and Cheltenham won 2 0 away as well and advanced 3 0 on aggregate in the playoff semifinals. So it will be Bradford City and Cheltenham for the promotion spot along with us. So I will share an update there when there is one to have. All right, well, here is the update. So we got a new deal for a stadium sponsor worth 70000 That's 60000 more than last year. So 170000 per year with five new deals, uh, 125000 in merchandise sales. Uh, evidently, we didn't sell kits. I don't know what the deal is. Um, I did make an offer for Andy Ryan. Uh, they accepted a bid of 35000 to Dunfer, Dunfermont, bleh, that team. And uh, he was going to be, I was projecting him to be a squad player um, at striker. He could also play wing, and he looks pretty decent, five-star potential. And so I was looking at him. I'm, You know, they accepted the offer. We went in to negotiate a contract. And, you know, with the new thing in FM20 where, you know, they have star, important, you know, fringe player. So he was recommended to be a fringe player, but I put him as a squad player, which was like two levels higher. He wanted to be a starter, which so it was two levels below that, one or two levels below him. Uh, he rejected it, countered back as, a, as an important player, and uh, I went down uh, – I think I did. I did the recommended first. He went immediately to orange, and we went up two levels to a squad player, and he rejected it. And I was like, "Well, you're not going to start, so I'm not going to lie to you. So whatever." We do have a scouting budget, uh, so I want to be scouting. Let's see, we've got ninety-eight thousand. Oh, 98,000 though. I can't really do much youth with that. And you know what? Youth is not really what we need. So let's spin this on. Let's look at all England players in our senior budget. That's 65, 30. 
you know what? I'm not going to spend that. And ooh, what was this? I hit something in preferences. All right. How frequently emails, emails, scout players. I want for two weeks. Keep scouting until full knowledge. Offer trials for two weeks. All right. So anyway, uh, we'll start scouting England. I like youth, but at the end of the day, most of these young kids are not going to be good enough to start for us. And, you know, that's, that costs a lot of money. So we need, we need to be hitting England, England players, right. And checking out that. So, cause we need, we need some guys that can step into our starting 11 or at least be in rotation to play. All right. We'll be back with any news. All right, so we've signed three players to kick off the transfer window. Uh, we have brought in a goalkeeper, Connor O'Malley, 25 years old, three-star ability. We get a C grade from the fans. Uh, David Tidov, a 20-year-old fullback, two-and-a-half-star current. And Lucas Talbro, a 21-year-old fullback, two-and-a-half-star. B-minus and C-plus on those. So let's take a quick look at them. Connor O'Malley, 25-year-old Irishman, pretty solid. I like our keeper from last year. This guy's a couple of years younger, so uh, that's probably going to, in fact, I need to transfer list him right now. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and transfer, offer him out to clubs, 225, 25%. And do that. Boom. All right. So uh, let's see. So anyway, that's Connor O'Malley. I like him. He's well-rounded. He's less eccentric. The other guy had like a 13 eccentricity. So four and a half star potential. A couple of years younger. Gives him some time to develop. So I don't think we lose much. So he'll be our first team if uh, if we can sell the other guy. Uh, David Titoff is a right back, but he can also play on the right wing. Uh, pretty decent physicals, uh, solid mentals, just about everything's double digits. Uh, he lacks just a touch on anticipation off the ball, but all of his core categories, including his technicals, are double digits. Better crosser, so we've got... Uh, We've got now, with these two guys, Titoff and the other guy that we signed, he's a 20-year-old Latvian, by the way, and Lucas Talbro, a 21-year-old Dane, four-star potential. Same thing, pretty good physicals, uh, double digits, everything on the, uh, everything that we need, except for technique, just a slight bit of lack there. All his minerals are real good. So I think these guys are good depth signings. So we're going to go ahead and welcome them. We've got an offer in for Shepard. Now, here's what's interesting. Let's take a look at the team report. <clears throat> so Shepard is our starting right back. Bernard is a reserve, but he's our left back. So if we sell Shepard, then our two new guys slot into that position. I might need to actually sign another right back at that point because I don't, you know, Bernard... McGinley, Kitching, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried about that. But here's the thing, because we do need to sell players, right? That's one of the things. So if we can sell players, then, you know, then we get, you know, that helps us out a little bit. So he's valued at four fifty. They're offering three fifty plus. Six install, four installments every six months, and then after 50 games, and then 20% sell on. He's got a minimum release clause of 600,000. You know what? I'm going to reject it. I'm going to reject that. And then I'm going to go in and we're going to just change his transfer status to 600,000. And that'll be that. All right, so let's see. What else? It looks like we have another transfer. Talbro is going to be ready for the upper club. Oh, somebody's made an offer for Junior Mondal. Cheltenham has. Cheltenham's in League 2. Mondal. 
He is some of my depth, and he can play just about everywhere. He's not very good up top. He'd be my backup right winger. He'd be my backup. But George Williams can play there, and we don't lose anything. Yeah, he could be had. What are they uh, offering on him? He's valued at 185. They're offering, you know what? I will accept that. Well, I'm going to reject it. All right, and then we're going to come back on him and offer to clubs. So we want to actually try to make some money here. So let's go to 245, 25. All right, so we'll figure that out. We'll be back when anything happens. All right, we are back for the season opener. A lot of business to take care of first. So we just had the leasing.com trophy draw. Uh, we're in the group with uh, Arsenal's under-23s, Stevenage, and Yeovil, or Yevil, and uh, we're in that group as well. Uh, so let's take a couple of looks here. Uh, so our payroll went up to 4.7. We are up to 3.2. We dropped about a million dollars in uh, salaries and whatnot with staff and players um, paying a lot of money out, and those players are gone. We still have quite a bit of transfer budget left. We, we went after a lot of cheap players this year. Uh, taking a look in the competition, uh, we are... Slated to finish 10th, 11 to 1 odds, which is not bad. And what are the rules in this league? It is top two go up, three through six go into the playoffs. Okay, so three up, three down. That's right. I remember championship is three down. So I did remember that. So hopefully we can challenge for this. I wouldn't mind maybe an extra year just to allow us to catch up um but we'll see all right let's jump into the transfer window uh we do have a couple of offers uh it pending uh one of our uh scouts alan smith has gotten a job offer uh we let's see he's getting offered ninety one thousand. yeah i'm not going to be able to match that there are petersboro is what a league higher yeah they're in the championship so I'll end up having to find a scout. I won't be able to convince him to stay. And one of our younger players that we can afford to move, we've accepted it. He just hasn't moved yet. Uh, and then we have had an offer out on Ashley Hunter for quite some time uh, with Fleetwood. We just upped it. I just upped it from 105 to 110 because they were asking 105, and then I just noted that they had raised it to 110. So I went ahead and paid the 5000 extra. Hopefully they accept that and we can get this guy in because I really want him. Uh, but let's take a look at our transfer history. So $200,000 in, $32,000 out. We actually have some money changing hands this year. Uh, Dominic Bernard uh, leaves to go to Sunderland uh, up to $205,000. I really didn't want to lose him. But you know, one of the things on our club vision is to buy players to sell for profit. So he's valued at 155 right now. I think it was closer to 125. So we got a good little profit on him. Uh, and I don't remember. Yeah, we got him on a free last year. So you know, well, you know, that's it's a tidy little profit. He did play 34 games, played well, and I would have. Uh, seen him starting for us this year but uh, it was a chance to make a move and you know get some extra money in Romario Vieira goes to H&W on a free end of contract uh, his contract was up this year he was only valued at 20,000 and his value actually went down uh, just didn't fit into our game plans Sean Mikulski who I I, you know, he's one of these players that I really like, but isn't quite good enough to play for you. Um, so we've sent him out on loan. Uh, we're getting a monthly fee, and they're picking up 100% uh, of his salary. So $2,300 if he plays, 
two two and a half thousand if he doesn't play. So we'll make a little bit of profit uh, over the course of the season, and that's just free money. Uh, so who have we brought in? Well, the first person we brought in was Connor O'Malley. He comes in from Petersboro on a free, and uh, let's take a look at him. He's 26 year old, years old. He's Irish, three-star current ability, three-and-a-half-star potential. He is going to be our new starting goalkeeper, and uh Two years younger than our other guy. We could not sell him. So we are going to have a pretty quality second string keeper. Now he is in his backup. So we're going to let them fight it out for the number one. But this is the guy I signed long term. Uh, we knew we were getting rid of Bernard. So I needed to go in and get some fullbacks. We talked about these earlier. We talked about all three of these. But David Titoff uh, comes in at right back. He is... Uh, you know, he has got some ability, 20-year-old Latvian, two-and-a-half star current, four-star potential with room to grow. And uh, we got him for 27000 at the last, was that last season? Oh, we got, yeah, we got him at the, after the end of the season. And he joined us, but he hadn't made an appearance until now. Same with Lucas Talbro from Dallum, two-and-a-half and four. And taking a look, we pick him up for five thousand uh, dollars. They paid a fee, and I don't know how he went to Dallas. That doesn't say loan or anything, but whatever. So uh, we did. That's our thirty-two thousand on those two guys that we paid. And I probably could have waited and gotten them on freeze as well. Uh, we'll look at the loan players last because you can see we rated Bristol City and a few other teams. Uh, James Whiting comes from P. Illerat on a free. Uh, he is a 19-year-old English midfielder. Uh, yeah, he's got some flaws in his game, but, you know, he's got some upside. He's more depth, and he'll probably be in the U23s for a couple of years. Maybe a guy that we can look to sell. Uh, then we brought in, uh, we'll look at the loans last. Uh, Ethan Galbraith comes in from Man United on a free. Uh, so on the day you get the email that the clubs in England have released players, I usually bring in all the young ones on tr uh, for, for trials and scout them. This guy looked really good. Two and a half star current, five star potential, valued at 78000 and uh, looks pretty solid. He's got some good physicals. Really good technicals. Even and I don't play a Cariello, but even a box to box, you know, he's he's not horrible. But deep lying playmaker is where I kinda see him slotting in. Uh, maybe even as a Mazala, but a little less dribbling. And let's see, taking a look, uh, Man United got him from Linfield on a free, and so we picked him up from those guys. And I think that's a good bit of business. And Lloyd Jones, we get on a free transfer, 24-year-old Englishman, three-star current, four-star potential. He's a center back, brings the ball out of the defense. He actually has pretty, really good passing. So this can kind of start developing into our ball-playing defender that I like to play, and he has all the ratings for that. So I really like this guy. Look for him to be a starter for us. He's played uh, four starts, one off the bench, playing a 7.24. Uh, so I like him a lot. Then we were looking at lone players. So first off, Jaden Brown from Huddersfield uh, comes in. Three and a half star current, five star potential. He could play left back uh, to replace Bernard, uh, Bernard. We were also looking at selling Shepard. Somebody came in with an offer for him. Wasn't quite high enough for me to make that move. And it was a team in our league. So I said, that's not worth it. Uh, but he can also fill in at center back if, if pressed uh, and can play that left side really well. Wing back, full back. Really like him. Decent crossing. So I think he's a good get for us. Uh, there, we picked up Kai Kennedy on loan from Rangers. He is kind of all well-rounded. He could play uh, the wingers in, the, in that tactic. He could play striker. He can play the number 10 in that tactic. He can drop back and play central, central mid. Very good uh, passing, first touch, dribbling. Very pacey. Uh, like him a lot. Uh, this is the second year. Uh, we picked him up at the end of the season uh, last year. 
So, yeah, he would have played for us last year. I don't know why that ticks in that way, but it does. But we just made the move for him because uh, we just signed him on 620. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Thomas O'Connor from Southampton, three and a half, four and a half, 21 year old Irishman. Uh, he, again, another left back, center back, midfielder, defensive mid, and left mid. He could play all of those, do them pretty decently. Again, very, very good physicals, very good crossing. So he could, you know, either one of those left fullback or left uh, mid positions, he can cross. First touch, passing, fits all the boxes that I like. Very good determination and work rate as well. So we, you know, we are going to have a tactic. We're going to play four in the mid instead of wingers. So I needed some somebody that could slot in mid left and mid right. So he fits that role. And everybody else comes from our uh, senior affiliate in Bristol City. So first up is Joe Morell, 23 year old Welsh, three and a half, four and a half, center mid and defensive mid, and very good tackling, marking. Uh, he can shoot. He can pass. This guy's well-rounded. Uh, he's playing a 7-3-1 in nine friendly scores with four goals and an assist. I expect he is going to slot into the starting 11. Uh, Sigrid Gronli, just a guess. He is Norwegian. Tom T., I know you're from that neck of the woods. Uh, not from Norway, but you're from up in that area. Uh, let me know. Correct pronunciation of the O with the line through it. I'm going to say Grunley. That's what I'm going with. And now it doesn't matter what it is, but three-star potential, uh, current five-star potential. Really good technicals. Again, very good passing. Not quite as good at the pace, but he has good finishing. He slots in at that number 10. He can fill a role as a reserve striker, midfielder, and on the right wings, both attacking and central. So good pick up there. And Tyreek Backinson, the last loanee. And again, center mid, defensive mid, but then he can spot in all around the board. He can play that Mazala. His technique, he's three and a half, four and a half. Physicals are off the board. Uh, the only thing he lacks is the crossing ability on the wings, but even that's above average. 14 passing, 13 long shots, work rate, determination. This guy's got it all. Uh, seven matches playing a 6-8-6. Six, six. So we'll see how they slot in. So that's all the moves. Uh, as I mentioned, we did have the, uh, the one bid out on Ashley Hunter. We'll just take a quick look at him, 24-year-old Englishman from Fleetwood, valued at $200,000. Uh, we have made the 110 bid, and he can play striker, or he can play those wing positions, and he is fast. So we hope we can get him in. Even if we sign him near $200,000, uh, you can see we are still – over a million, almost a million and a half dollars under payroll, which we're going to need. We're going to need that. And if we take a look at our team report, uh, we're going to take out the, okay, yep, I already had the reserves out. So if we take a look, we've got Colin slotting in up front, March, Stevens, and Williams, along with Grunley backing him up. Collins, Williams, Mondal, Kennedy, and Marsh on the right side. Freer, Collins, Kennedy, Williams, Mondal on the left side. So a lot of the same guys. Collins won't be playing there often, but if he has to, then Marsh slots in up top. I did try to move Stevens. We did loan out that other player, and that's why I'm hopeful that we can sign Hunter because then he slots in for Collins on the right side and leaves Collins up top. Uh, and then, you know, we have Kennedy fitting in on both sides, Williams as well. In the mid, we did not sign anybody permanent. We've got Adams back this year. Uh, we did sign Pills to a loan extension. Uh, White as well. So you see he bumps down to fourth in the depth chart, according to this. Now we want to look at that because he's a great penalty taker. He's a really strong passer. I do like him a lot, but these are all lone guys. So, I, you know, I'm not 100% worried about them. Uh, Adams is going to slot into that defensive mid, and then we have Backinson and Pilge in an emergency. 
if we need to drop back. And even if Pills comes in here, we've got plenty of guys to bring in the central mid. Brown and O'Connor on the left. Uh, Shepard, Tidov, and Talbro on the right. Ross and McGinley Kitching anchoring the center of the line. Uh, we do have Lloyd Jones there as well. Brown can play in a pinch. McGinley can slide over to the left as well as Kitching. And Rawson can play on the right. O'Malley up top in the goal. We'll end back in the goal. Adam Smith moves into that reserve role. And I am going to move him to the U23 squad. So that's what's going on there. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know what you think of the moves, the signings. Anybody stand out to you? But other than that, we open up the season with Wimbledon. And we are in League One this year, so let's get to that. Team hot dynamics look really good. The locker room, leadership, support. Uh, if we take a look at the hierarchy, uh, we do have uh, 12 support, 13 no real opinion. Most of those are new guys or guys that haven't started. I meant to show you, the, there's, your, uh, there's your results. 6-0, 4-0, 8-1. 0-0 draw with leads. Uh, so that was a really nice performance. 2-1 over Port Vale and 1-0 over Portsmouth as things got progressively harder uh, after the three openers. And we open up with Wimbledon. And we will finish the season with Mill Shrewsbury, Portsmouth, and Millwall away. So that'll be interesting. We're on the road today. We are favorites. Uh, so I am going to, uh, so here's our three tactics. We're keeping the, uh, four, three, three with that set up and the four, four, one, one that we brought in at the end of last year. I brought a flat four, four, two as well. Uh, but we are going to go with this one. I've changed the, all these guys are 17 that are coming up through the, through the club. I don't think any of them are quite good enough to start for us, but koval has got 14 finishing. You know, he could do a job. Do I bring him up? Tell you what, I think I am. I'm going to bring him up training squad. Move to the senior squad. All right, let's do that again and see if that fills that last slot. It does. Yay. All right, so no more of that. And let's get to the match. They're coming out in a 3-5-2. All right, encourage the team. First game of the season, we're going to try to pump up their morale. And let's get into it, boys. I think it's pretty good that we're picked to finish so high as a newly promoted team. That's pretty impressive. White drops it back, Kitching. Plays it way back. Pills has to make a run for it. Pills turns the corner, finds Freer. Lays it off to Brown. Oh, Brown gets past a lunge. And Kai Kennedy gets the first goal for Forrest Green here in our second season. Jaden Brown, two new players. Chipping in on that goal, and we are up 1-0. Very good. A right attacking right winger with the goal and the assist from our left back. All right, let's get creative. Six shots, four on target. Got to like that. All right, another corner. Uh, there's a penalty, and Harvey White, penalty taker extraordinaire, is going to line up to slot this one. He likes to go bottom left, so I'm thinking right here. Oh, and he goes right, and it gets saved. What did I tell you there, Harvey? Saved by the keeper. That's a nice save. Uh, that one's booted out. Adams controls it. All right, they're fired up. Uh, we are going to demand more. All right, they're focused. 
I'd say that's a pretty one-sided half. Unfortunately, we are... You played well, but there's room for improvement. They, no response. That's fine. So we are playing the wingers. Uh, let's check something in the tactics here because they are bunched up. Um, so let's focus play on the, down the sides. Let's do that, see if that helps us. I mean, you know, we're dominating here. It's okay, but maybe we'll focus where they're not. Just see if that helps us any at all. All right, our defense. Putting a wall up. Oh, that one got outside to O'Neal. Crossed in, and Joe Piggott. Pidgeot, first goal of the season. Luke O'Neal with the assist. Ugh. And we just got undone on in the back there. Uh, demand more. Brown into the box. Oh, I think our guy stopped it from going in. Oh, the missed penalty is going to come back to haunt us. Oh, there's a header. Farron Ross in his first goal. Elliot Freer with the assist and another set piece. It's always good if we can uh, get some set piece stuff. Let's pull back to positive and... We'll have the uh, goalkeeper slow the pace up a little bit. All right. Shepard. Let's move Rawson outside. Lloyd Jones will bring him inside. And Koble. Oh, this is that youngster. Yeah, no, I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> uh, let's see. Freer. How about George Williams? Let's get him some playing time. I'm still I'm still getting used to the players for the bench, so I'm I'm not I'm not as comfortable with my bench this year. Uh, let's see. So he is a defensive mid. Let's pull off Harvey White. He got dinged up with that. Uh, with that missed penalty, and that's what's hurting his average rating. I don't think he really played that bad, but. Oh, no. Headed out and cleared. <sighs> All right. Let's tighten up. A nice header down. Outlet ball to Williams. Beats his man. Oh, we've got guys in the middle. Just slot it over. But George Williams takes it all the way in, and he gets his first goal of the season, and we are up 3-1. And now I can drop some praise on him. We've already made three subs. Luke O'Neill, that's their guy. Dominant performance. Three clear-cut chances. And we are going to be passionate very pleased all right guys well that puts us top of the table after one match and we're going to go ahead and end the episode there these transfer ones sometimes do go a little long but uh very very good result uh we will come back relatively quickly i'm thinking maybe uh well crawley's our old nemesis from last year and why don't we come back for Crawley and Ipswich? We'll see you guys for that. Let me know in the comments what you think about the transfers, who you think our stars are going to be this year. And uh, we will talk to you guys next time. Take care. Bye.